I'm moving the Rhode Island Reds down to be with the other chickens. So I'm moving them kind of a long way. So here we are about to cross the driveway. <laughs> I guess none of them have ever seen gravel before. So they're all standing way back at the back of the pen. What do you think? Don't climb under. Here they are. They're about to go in with the other chickens. But some of the simple things in life are just wild and interesting. I'm looking at this cloud. And this is actually just one cloud. <laughs> oh my goodness. We think that Mount Everest is amazing. <laughs> it's just a cloud can be amazing. of this roof because this middle gap is going to be covered later when we build this uh, picnic shelter out this way attached. Closely, it looks like it's been raining. <laughs> it's just so humid today. That's all sweat. <laughs> My new friend, Gehrig, is an engineer, and he was here at our house and uh, took a look at the barn and gave us some tips on adding some ties that would really strengthen it up, keep us from having the walls expanding outward. Um, I knew I needed to do some things, but I just didn't specifically know exactly what to do. And so that was a lot of help. So I just wanted to mention him and, and put in these beams. Right now I'm just putting in a couple of screws on each side. Um, I'm going to buy some bolts that will bolt all the way through. Uh, that's the correct way that I was told to put those together. So I'll get some of those tonight and do that tomorrow. It's cool learning plants and trees. I don't know what kind of pine this is, but this is pine. This is sassafras that we made tea out of. This is, I don't know if it's muscadine or scuppernon. 
I don't know if I could tell the difference in the leaves, but these are uh, wild grapes that grow in North Carolina and other areas of the southeast. Right here is some maple. Over here is uh, called a tulip poplar. Whoa, my focus is messing up. This is a tulip poplar. The leaves are kind of tulip shaped. And this is a gumball tree. We don't like those. We're definitely gonna have to take that one out. <laughs> now I'm a couple of panels into the other side. And this side is almost completely done. I am still shy one panel up there. I'm gonna have to come from that side over to do it. I need to also trim it to size. So it might end up being one of the last ones I do. This whole side is now dry. <laughs> Today, when it started raining, I sat under this side and it was nice until I saw lightning. <laughs> and then I had to take off and go inside. It's not quite, uh, a safe lightning shelter yet. But it's a beautiful place to sit and look out across the field and the trees and see the blue sky. Okay, gather in. Come on, hey. Everybody look this way and say cheese. This isn't working, what should I say? Alfalfa. Some of the stuff I've learned about these bees is pretty interesting. If I upset them, they can actually recognize people's faces and they can fly past one person to sting another person if you become their enemy, which is pretty amazing. Um, I had a suggestion from someone that we, that they said their father used to torch these. And so that was their suggestion of how to get rid of it. I would imagine you might do that during the night or something. We don't want to use poisons, so um, we would want some kind of natural remedy to get rid of these. I am trying a uh, sugar trap. I bought some soda that I don't think my kids would drink, pineapple Fanta, <laughs> so that I won't go to get my soda and find out it's gone. But... Uh, this little half bottle upside down, creating a trap. You put a little bit of soap in it so when they go inside and get into the liquid, they sink. So we're gonna try this for a little while just to just to see if it has any effect, if it works on their population some, or if it really becomes something we could wipe them out with. So that's our Hornet stuff, our Hornet update. We haven't been using this lately. But I just noticed these little beehives right here that are pretty awesome. It's amazing what all these creatures make. If they're anything like a dirt dauber, there might be some dead spiders inside there for the uh, larva to eat while they're growing up into new little bees. I've come back and cut up the rest of this tree, loading up logs in the truck. Gotta bring these over here.